1. This happened last summer. My family and myself were sitting outside enjoying the evening cool air. A neighbor came by to visit to make some small talk. So an hour in, he started telling us about working for the Los Angeles Unified School District as a janitor. Granted, I have seen ghost movies and heard various stories on YouTube, but his stories were making me uneasy. At that point, I excused myself, telling my parents and him I was going to make myself dinner. After I had walked inside, my mother had followed me. When I had walked into the kitchen, she told me she was going to the restroom. Once she comes back, she will make herself something. I put some leftovers in the microwave, and as I was waiting for my food to warm up, I was fixing the TV antenna. I should state that my mom's sister had died the year before. My cousin had her cremated and my mom has her urn. Well, as I was adjusting the antenna, I thought my mom had walked behind me into the kitchen. Next thing I heard was the toilet flush. I asked my mom, where are you? She answered, still in the restroom. I walked into the kitchen and no one was there. Then I thought about what I had just seen, or thought I had seen. The image I had seen was a black shadow, about 5 foot 2, and it had no features at all. I was so scared at that point. I'm not sure if it was my aunt's ghost or just an evil entity. When that had happened, I called my dad and asked him to say a prayer in the house. I have not seen anything since, but I never want to see a black shadow again. 2. As I'm typing this, it's just before midnight. I'm listening to my two-year-old from the other side of the door talking to what I can only assume is his dose die. Ghost guy in toddler talk. I guess I ought to give fair warning that some parts of what I'm about to share can be pretty emotional. I can recall what I believe to be paranormal happenings from most points in my life. My earliest memory was being in my bed early in the morning, sun just rising and hearing your typical cliché, creepy-as-fuck voice coming from next to my bed saying, Leah. Get up. Get out of bed. I dare you to get up. So I did what any logical four-year-old would do and hid under the safety of my blankets, sweaty and ready to piss myself until my mother finally came in to get me up. We moved shortly after that, thank goodness, so I don't recall anything quite so frightening happening during that time frame. I'll skip ahead a bit here, I suppose. I've always had a, I don't know, sixth sense of sorts. I guess most people do in some form or another. But for me, it mostly only applies to births and deaths. I've often known when someone is pregnant. I remember my stepmother telling me she needed to talk to me when I was 16, and I just nonchalantly stated Jay is pregnant. Jay was my cousin, who was only 15 at the time. She grilled me on how I knew. It had just been something my gut told me, and it came out of my mouth before I'd even processed the thought. Another time I was in the army. One of my instructors, an officer I didn't know personally. She was telling me something and out of nowhere I said, You know you're pregnant, right? She teared up and told me that was impossible. She and her husband had been doing fertility treatments and she'd had another of several miscarriages a few weeks prior. And they decided to give up. I said, I don't know what to tell you, you're pregnant though. A couple of weeks later she ran up to hug me and tell me they were having twins. I won't go through every instance, but I will say it's happened upwards of 20 times. When I was younger, it was like that. Just a thought in my head. As I've gotten older, I experience severe pregnancy symptoms, and when someone finally comes to mind, I get in touch with them, and once they confirm it, my symptoms stop. One of my best friends, I told her the night she was going to go into labor. I was staying with her to wait for her baby to come, and suddenly felt back pains and labor pain. Her doctor told her that afternoon it would be another week or two. Leah 1, Doctor 0. It's the same with deaths. I was asleep in bed one night with my ex. Woke up at about 2am, jumped up in bed actually. The sound I made woke him up, and I said my grandma's dead. I got up to head to the toilet, and halfway there the phone started to ring. It was my mother, calling to tell me my grandmother had just died. A few years later, and I was in another relationship. It was severely abusive, and I was terrified to get away from it. We had a six-month-old son, and I found out I was pregnant again. With this second pregnancy, something always felt off. I had a hard time feeling connected to it, like something bad would happen. As we were heading into my 20-week ultrasound, I suddenly told the father that something was going to be wrong. 
Not with the baby, but the pregnancy. I was right. There was an issue with the placenta, they said, but probably turn out fine. As time went on, I told the father, my work, my family, that the issue would get worse and I'd end up in the hospital. To start making arrangements for my son, work, bills, etc. Once again, I was right. The doctor confirmed what I'd said. I'll skip the details, but my second son was born on Black Friday, six weeks premature. I'll call him Patrick. It took a while for me to bond. I was convinced he was going to die, even though, other than being small, he was perfectly healthy. After a few weeks, I let myself finally see the love I had for him. Still, I was very cautious, overly even. With my first, I'd never been worried, but with Patrick, I was constantly afraid. If I couldn't hear him babbling in the car, I'd pull over every five minutes to check him. I was afraid to sleep too long and constantly get up to check. The abuse from their father began escalating, and I was trying seriously to get a plan in place to escape. He never harmed them, but he threatened to make sure I'd never see them again, and I wasn't going to let that happen. I did all of their care, and even though I was the only one working, I'd take them to a sitter instead of leaving them with him. I started seeing shadow people around Patrick. They were small, maybe four feet. They'd follow whatever room he was in, and in his bassinet, they'd be in a circle around it. They never felt particularly evil in their intent, but their presence felt ominous. A few weeks after I started seeing them, while I was at work one day, I was a nurse. I got a call from their father in my lunch break. He didn't say anything too particular, but as I hung up, this feeling of dread overtook me. I knew one of my children was about to die. I ran back into the hospital where I worked. I told my nurse manager that something was wrong with my children and I needed to hand off the medication keys and leave and I wouldn't be back for a few days. I picked up my children and went home, terrified. I took them to the doctor who said they were fine. He did Patrick's six-month physicals since it was due the following week anyways. I spent four days forcing myself awake, watching them. The fourth night, I couldn't keep my eyes open. It was around 3 a.m. and Patrick was hungry. I was trying to feed him, and kept dropping the spoon from exhaustion. The father insisted I close my eyes, he'd feed them, and wake me up to put Patrick back to bed as I always insisted. He never woke me. Instead, he put Patrick on the couch asleep, stole my ATM card and left. He was hiding a pretty nasty drug habit. Crack along with his other wonderful attributes. I was awoken five hours later to him telling me Patrick was not breathing. I started CPR as I told him to call 911. I buried my son Mother's Day weekend, just before he turned six months. I'm going to leave a lot of these next details out, as they don't pertain to the paranormal. But I'll say this. It was my son's death that finally gave me the strength to get away, although it took a year for it to be for good. I'm a veteran, and I moved in with another veteran I'd met in a VA-type program. At this apartment, we quickly began experiencing activity. It was a small apartment above a dog grooming shop. We had a long stairway to get up to it, with doors kept locked at the top and bottom. The top door we ended up covering the window on because when we'd be in the kitchen, where we hung out at night, we would sometimes see a face in the window which was impossible to be a person with the lower door locked. From the next room, looking into the kitchen, we'd see a large shadow being lurking. It gave a very creepy vibe, so we'd keep the kitchen light on to try to keep it away. We'd hear sounds at the bottom of the stairs. At time, it would be like an injured animal, others a cat meowing, and sometimes a crying baby. It always started around 3 a.m., par for the course for veterans. We were both insomniacs, so we were up for all this. It was like the sounds were luring us to come down. The couple times we did go check, nothing was there. But when you walk those stairs, you'd always hear someone a couple steps behind. More than once, he or I would talk to it, thinking it was each other, but nope. Turn around to find no one there. My friend had given the bedroom to my son and I. He'd just turned three. The bedroom had a closet and had its own light and a door that dragged on the carpet so it wasn't easily opened or closed. My son didn't like the door open, so one night, as usual, I tucked him in, closed the door, then turned to the CD player, 
to turn on the meditation music we put on at night. As I'm fumbling with the player, my son asked me to shut the closet door. I told him I just did, silly. He said, I know, mommy. But the mean, scary-looking man inside it opened it. This sent chills down my spine. I finally looked and sure enough it was open. I asked my son if he was still there and he said, He's right there, mommy. I don't like him. I slammed that goddamn door so hard. A couple days later, when he woke me up, my son smiled at me and said, Mommy, guess what? Baby Patrick is back in your belly. I tried questioning him a bit, but he just repeated it, rolled over and fell back to sleep. I figured out that day I was in fact pregnant again. It happened the day before I got away from his father for good. My third son was born nine months later. I'm going to wrap this up for today, but I'll just share this one more instance, as it will save me from writing about his death on another post. It was very hard for me to go to my son's gravestone. I still can't go alone. My roommate offered to go one day, my first time since the funeral. As we pulled in, the grief overtook me. He stayed in the car to let me go over. I fell to my knees, sobbing at the stone. Now this part is hard to describe, so I'll do my best here. It was a kind of grey day. But as I sat there, a beam of light came down from the sky next to me. Then another, and another. Until there were beams of light surrounding me at the gravesite. Suddenly, all of my grief lifted. Not just my grief, but all pain and uncertainty that is part of the human condition. I felt overwhelming peace. If you've ever listened to someone who's had a near-death experience describe going into the light and feeling a total peace, that's what this was like. I was awestruck. When the thought crossed my mind to go, the lights disappeared back into the sky. All the heaviness returned to me. I got in the car wondering if any of it was real, when one more came down through the car, and for a moment I felt the peace again. And it was like it was telling me none of this is forever. My son is at peace and someday I will be too. Then it was gone. When I finally spoke up, my friend described watching it as if it was this beautiful thing he was gifted to see. He says he tried sharing what he watched that day, but he can never really put into words the depth of it. 3. An important backstory. My sister and I haven't had the best luck in life. Both of our parents are alcoholics, and not the best of parents. At the time this happened, my sister and I were living with my mother. My sister, 23, was busy studying engineering, and I was 21. Finished my college certificate and started working, and I did not have the money to move out of the house, so we had no choice, we had to live with our mother. My mom, being an alcoholic, came home drunk every night. I would make food, my sister would clean, and usually we would lock ourselves in our room so my mother would leave us alone. I know this doesn't make sense now, but this is important. When my mother gets drunk, she gets physically and emotionally violent, hence why we lock ourselves away. It is also important to know that our room is the only room upstairs. Yes, we are a bit old to share a room, but we are close, and we didn't have the luxury of having separate bedrooms. My mother's room is downstairs. On to the story. This particular week, my sister was studying for exams, and like always, when she needs my mother to leave her alone so she could study, my mom would fly off the handle. So this night, we made sure to be out of the living room, upstairs and locked in our room before she came home. So when we heard her come in, we shouted a hello and stayed in the room. I was always so scared she might do something. I knew my sister would be up till late studying, so I went to bed. Then I kind of started to wake up from my sleep, but not completely. I knew my sister was next to me, and she had her laptop on and the lights were still on. Then I heard my mom coming up the stairs and I freaked out completely. She rattled on the doorknob, then noticing it was locked. It made her angrier, and she tried to break through the door. I bolted to the door and froze as I stood against the door to keep her out. I couldn't move. I tried yelling for my sister to help me keep our mom from coming in, but nothing would come out. I was paralyzed with fear and I decided to just try make any noise to get her attention. So I tried making a grunting noise, literally anything to get her to notice me. I thought my mom was going to hurt us. And then suddenly my sister is shaking me, trying to wake me up. But still I couldn't move. My eyes were wide open. 
and she was still beside me with her laptop like I remembered. But where is mom? She told me that I was sleeping and I started making these weird grunting noises and that I freaked her out. And then my mom never came upstairs. By then I was crying. I then told her what happened and she helped me calm down, reassuring me that my mom never came upstairs. It was the weirdest and scariest thing ever. It wasn't like a ghost or a demon like usually with people experiencing sleep paralysis. The only real thing from my experience was my sister sitting on the bed, working on her laptop, and then me grunting, trying to get her attention. It's almost two years later. We have moved out over a year ago, and I don't really have a relationship with my mother. I also don't want one. The things we went through still scare me, but things are better now. Neither my sister or I are ashamed to share our experiences. We are much better people because of what we went through. We don't like drinking alcohol. We just try to be better than our parents, and hopefully we will be. And if I may say to myself, I am proud that we are determined to be better, and do better than what we went through. Everyone deserves to be happy, no matter what the circumstances. 4. I am not a morning person. There was a dim light in my window that made me realize it was about to go sun up before 6am. It was a hazy sight just when you woke up. While trying to open my eyes, I saw a woman slowly walking to the foot of my bed, two or three steps, then gently tugged my foot while saying, Hey, wake up, almost to a whisper. She was wearing a long white dress with her face covered, with her shoulder-length hair. She was also looking down and stood almost into a side view. I thought it was my mom, so I said in a sleepy voice, mm, Okay, but still continued to sleep. This happened when I used to live with my parents. It was only the three of us. I always locked my bedroom door every night, but I still asked my mom if she woke me up that morning. She wakes up early most of the time, so I thought it was her. She said she didn't. I realized that she doesn't do that without reason. She'd let me sleep as much as I want. And she doesn't wear a long white dress to sleep, nor has shoulder-length wavy hair. Her third eye is active, so she never pranked anyone. She has a loud voice and never woke me up in a whisper. I got goosebumps when I realized what happened. Then she told me not to sleep with lights off again. It was not my mom who woke me up. 5. I've always been fascinated with the paranormal ever since I was a kid. This happened to me when I was around 10 years old in the house I grew up in. And as far as I know, it is not haunted. It was after school time, so I invited my younger cousin to play in our house. I remember it was around 3 p.m. If you are standing just outside the house, the only light source would be the small skylight in the dining area, the front windows, and the small window in the kitchen at the rear part. The rest was dark. It was dead quiet. There was nobody home. As we were about to walk in, a meter from the front door I stopped. I saw a tall shadow hat man who ran from the master bedroom straight into the dining area. I saw him through the half-length screen door. What paralyzed me into place is when he stopped for a moment to turn his head to face us. Then he continued on his way, running out of sight. It was an exaggerated way of running. The length that he ran is only less than 5 meters wall to wall, so imagine how fast it happened. I was sure it was neither from my family nor a robber because he disappeared in the wall of the dining area. I looked at my cousin horrified while asking her, Did you see that? She nodded, Yes. What did it look like? I asked again to confirm that I was not hallucinating. It was a shadow man with a top hat, his head turned to look at us. She replied in a panic. Then we both automatically knew what to do next. Run away as fast as we can. Whenever I remember it, it is always in slow motion. He was a pure shadow, faceless, but he had a full, tall human figure. This only happened once, and I will never forget it. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Scary Subscriber Stories, Episode 68. Thank you very much to everybody who sent their stories in for use in this video. If you have a story yourself that you'd like me to read, as long as it's your story, then please do send it to kingofthecities at gmail.com. 
You'll find the email address in the description of every video, and it's also on the closing credits card uh, that is currently on screen. If you happen to be looking at the screen, you'll see that. Right there. No, no. A little bit lower down. Okay, that's it there. All right. Okay. Uh... All I ask is if you send your story in, you just uh, just uh, label it for me, so what type of story it is, and uh, just be as detailed as you possibly can. Right. The longer the better. Okay, with that, I think I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves. <laughs>